non-financial corporate and quasi-government debt, there's 187 trillion. They anticipate only 1.9 trillion be tokenized. Remember, we already have securitization, turning these assets into a security and then trading them, we're selling them to you. Uh, real estate, 20 trillion, 1.5 trillion tokenized. Private equity venture capital at a 7 trillion, with 0.7 trillion tokenized. Security financing and collateral, 42 trillion with 1 trillion tokenized. I think a lot of these lower numbers is first of all, they have to get adoption because there's no secondary market in it. We'll talk more about that. In this video, we'll explore how BRC and similar initiatives are revolutionizing the way we perceive and trade assets from real estate to commodities. Asset tokenization is the process of converting ownership rights of tangible or intangible assets into digital tokens on a blockchain platform. This innovative approach allows for the representation of a wide array of assets, such as real estate, artwork, commodities, and financial instruments in a digital form that can be traded and owned fractionally. Tokenization allows individuals to own fractions of high-value assets, breaking them down into bite-sized pieces. For instance, if you own a piece of artwork worth a significant sum, you can tokenize it into digital tokens, enabling multiple individuals to own fractions of the artwork. This fractional ownership opens up new avenues for investment and liquidity, as assets become more easily transferable and tradable. BRICS coin, introduced in October 2023, is a new type of digital currency not tied to any specific country or group of countries. It aims to facilitate business transactions among the BRICS nations Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa and the rest of the world. However, its significance goes beyond mere currency. BRC represents a tool for asset tokenization and fractional ownership. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. BRC, which is a brick coin, asset tokenization with bricks coin, a complete guide. So the thing that you need to understand is this is actually a private corporation. But if you have a piece of art, this is how tokenization works. If you have a piece of art, you could use a BRC coin to create a digital token that stands for that art. Instead of selling the entire artwork to one person, you could sell pieces of it to many. Each person would own a piece of the artwork represented by digital tokens. So it's just really a digital token that can break these assets down into little tiny pieces. That's true for real estate. Guess what? That could even be true for gold. So you want to keep this in mind because the plan, the easier it is to enable you to spend money without realizing what you're doing, the more money you will spend. Now, there is a way that you can use it for savings as well. But what we're really looking at, is this a public-private partnership? Because that's what it's always about. In other words, governments will allow something to run and develop privately to see if they can get buy-in before they then take it over. But I want to go a little bit more into the BRICS technology, introducing the BRICS coin. Now, it was started in October 2023, and it's a new type of digital money, but it is not tied to any one country or group of countries. It's meant to help the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, do business with each other and the rest of the world. But remember, we're tokenizing assets, right? So if you're holding your wealth on your phone and through, through perception management, they can enti entice you to spend your equity, you do that without even thinking about it. And before you know it, the World Economic Forum gets what they want, which is you own nothing, but somebody owns all, everything because wealth does not disappear. It merely shifts location. It is being adopted by many countries, allies and friends, establishing itself as a strong utility token for daily use in the future but there's not much use for it right now. And even if they do not have that formal 
tokenization program, it definitely is happening and it's a, it's a possibility around the world. So let's take a look at this global market and what asset tokenization really is. Real world assets, so tangible assets, tangible assets refers to the process of converting the ownership rights. You hold it and you own it. That's the most important way. But converting the ownership rights of tangible or intangible assets into digital tokens on a blockchain platform. This innovative approach allows for the representation of a wide array of assets, such as real estate, artwork, commodities, and financial instruments in a digital form that can be traded and owned fractionally. So let's say you have a million dollars worth of equity in your house or whatever that equity is in your house, but you still have a mortgage on it. Guess what? That equity can be broken into teeny weeny bite sized pieces. Now you go out and you see that sailboat that you want to buy or a, or a shirt that you want to buy. Well, you got your equity on your phone, so therefore you have money. Can you see what I'm talking about here? Now, if you use it for savings and accumulation, but it's also a way to globalize your assets, your hard assets or financial assets, meaning your whatever your deposits are, et cetera. It is a way to break down your equity into tiny pieces and inspire you to liquidate. So a little bit more because anything can be tokenized, real estate aren't collectibles, commodities. So tokenizing US real estate properties, now, what I find kind of interesting about this, because what we know is all assets have already been financialized. You know, you're thinking that you're paying for your utilities based on supply and demand. In the real, in, in real life, you are paying for utilities based upon traders and where they are in the markets. But you want to be very careful about this because this is a huge market. And when Wall Street sees that, they go for it. Trillions of value. This is from Citigroup, which is a bank. Almost anything of value can be tokenized and tokenization of financial and real world. Whenever you hear real world, they're talking about tangibles. Uh, could be the killer use case. Blockchain needs to drive a breakthrough. So, hey, we've been hearing about blockchain and that custody chain. So if they can get everything onto the blockchain, well, then they can use it as another trading vehicle. They can inspire you to liquidate and sell off and give away all of your equity. Let's look at how, how, how what that market looks like between now and 2030. Because in non-financial corporate and quasi-government debt, there's 187 trillion, they anticipate only 1.9 trillion be tokenized. Remember, we already have securitization, turning these assets into a security and then trading them or selling them to you. Uh, real estate, 20 trillion, 1.5 trillion tokenized. Private equity venture capital at a 7 trillion with 0.7 trillion tokenized. Security financing and collateral, 42 trillion with 1 trillion tokenized. I think a lot of these lower numbers is first of all, they have to get adoption because there's no secondary market in it. We'll talk more about that. Trade finance. So how do you trade, how you finance trade? That's a $42 trillion market, and they anticipate having $1 trillion tokenized. So these low numbers going out four years is really because they're competing with already financialized assets. How can they shift that? I don't know. But this is the financial assets as a percent of gross domestic products. So these are all of the securitizations all of that that you see. There's 1971 when we went to a debt-based system and control of inflation was handed over to the private central banks. Sounds like a good idea to me. You can see quite easily, oops, let me grab that pointer. You can see quite easily that this transition from a gold-backed, quasi-gold-backed currency into a debt-based currency, that 
turning these assets into financial assets, exploded in the 80s, peaked just before 2007, because this, this thick line is 2008. Can you see this pattern shift, by the way? Right? And here we are in 2023. 374% of, of the US GDP has been turned into financial assets that the banks can trade. Asset tokenization holds profound implications for the future of finance and investment. By tokenizing real-world assets, individuals can unlock liquidity and access previously illiquid markets. Real estate, for example, traditionally considered an illiquid asset, can now be tokenized, allowing for fractional ownership and trading on secondary markets. However, while asset tokenization offers numerous benefits, it also presents challenges and risks. One of the primary concerns is the potential for individuals to unknowingly spend their equity without fully realizing the consequences. As assets become easily transferable and tradable through digital tokens, there's a risk of overspending and loss of wealth. Asset tokenization is not just a private sector initiative. It often involves collaboration between governments, institutions, and private corporations. Governments may allow private initiatives to develop and test asset tokenization models before considering broader adoption or regulation. What do you think is really guiding all of this? But this is also why they needed to come out with something else to make this grow more. Once banks were in charge in 1971, converting those assets was the goal. But financialization distorts economic investment and reduces the mutual dependence of capital and labor, eroding the social contract in which capitalism delivers profits to the owners of capital and a growing standard of living to citizens. Well, handing this over to the central banks enabled that financialization and that growth of income and wealth inequality that is greater now than it was prior to the 1929 stock market crash. I'm telling you people, this is all about transferring wealth and transferring risk. And when they have enough of that transferred, you will watch that it will become way too expensive to keep the game going. But once that happens, there's not really a whole lot that you're gonna be able to do about it. But it could indeed enable banks to transfer ever more wealth from the many, from the public, to the few, to the elites. Well, let's not do that. We have choices right now, but they're touting it as a liquidity enhancement. Let's talk about this. The definition of liquidity refers to the ease in which an asset can be bought or sold in a market without affecting its price. We're seeing lack of liquidity in the treasury market, which is the foundation of the global financial system. And that started in 2015. But tokenization can convert traditionally illiquid assets into divisible and easily transferable tokens. Moreover, financial institutions play a significant role in the tokenization process as they provide the infrastructure and expertise necessary for asset digitization and trading. However, the increasing financialization of assets raises concerns about wealth distribution and social inequality as wealth becomes concentrated in the hands of a few. Looking ahead, asset tokenization is poised to reshape the financial landscape, with trillions of dollars worth of assets projected to be tokenized in the coming years. While this presents opportunities for investment and liquidity enhancement, it also underscores the need for individuals to exercise caution and awareness. You see, we've got to break this equity down into teeny weeny pieces. So, ah, what's 35 bucks here or 150 bucks there or even a few thousand bucks over there? You're not paying attention and you're inspired to not pay attention. Real estate is typically an illiquid asset. And I mean, we've done a lot of securitization and we know that there are problems in the fact that there is a liquidity mismatch between those um, real estate ETFs and assets 
and how long it takes to sell a property. Well, this eliminates that, right? Uh, it can be your, the asset can be tokenized to allow fractional ownership and trading on secondary markets, thereby widening the investor pool. But what that also does is it makes it easier for you to spend. I'm talking about this because you need to be aware, right? Just take this information so that when it becomes more prevalent, you have this information back there to draw upon. So you make choices that put your best interest first. That's the key. You have to have a plan. That's why the strategy is so important. With all equity held in small increments on your phone and easy to utilize. Hmm. Do you think? that, I mean, they employ the most brilliant psychological minds in the world to help entice you to move forward in a way that supports their goals. Because if you spend all your equity, you're going to blame yourself. But it's really by design. But you need to be aware that if you don't hold it, you don't own it. I can clearly see some benefits to tokenization. I am not prepared to discuss them at this point, but we will be discussing them in the reasonably near future. There are so many great things that are happening. Mm -hmm.